So I've got bonds rallying. Okay, everybody, hope you had a great trading day. There is a lot to go over. The best way to handle this is to review what we need to be watching for tomorrow and what the heck happened today. So let me just start here because I got a lot of questions about this one already, Google. So this bar right here, it's not exactly what I would refer to as a gravestone. It's more of just an inverted hammer. Uh, it's not what you want to see. I mean, one, two, three up, here's your reversal bar, and then you're down, right? We know what this pattern is. We know it's called a bearish hook reversal. We know this from that candlestick video that we have watched that I have preached at nauseum at this point. So uh, we know what that pattern is. I will link it at, at the end again so you can identify that pattern. Um, really right now you're just at a level and it looks like you've broken that level already. So I, I think it's possible for you to come back down here and test. Now, obviously the CPI came out and we should talk about this. So this is investing.com. It's a free site. And I always use this free site because I think it's important that you can find this stuff online yourselves so that you can start understanding it. But if you go through this really closely, the most important thing, oops, get rid of that ad. Most important thing is right here. See this core CPI? They actually give you three stars so that you, if you don't even know exactly what to do, just look for the ones with three stars. They're the ones that people are watching. So this 0.7 came over 0.6. Why is this important? Core CPI takes out food and energy, okay? It takes out food and energy, and that's still going up, all right? So that tells you very first thing when people wanna know, is inflation peaking? Well, inflation might not be peaking or have peaked, if you're in a position where month over month core taking out energy, which is going through the roof and food, which is going through the roof because of the war and inflation and several other factors, if that's going on, then the chances of us peaking and the chances of this CPI number being full CPI, including energy and including food year over year, the chances of this number being peaked is significantly less. Now, if this number came in at 0.5 and this number uh, was this, you may have seen a different reaction today because you would have said, well, it's showing that the trajectory is slowing. And that's not what this is showing. It's showing that it's accelerating. Essentially, it's showing so far everything the Fed has done has done nothing. So what do we do about that? Well, we realize this. We realize that rates must go higher. And if rates go higher, that means people that are borrowing, okay? And you see how the bond market actually even rallied. Uh, because people are buying bonds because of recessionary time. So it is putting pressure on this, which is actually good for home buyers. But who's really gonna get hurt out of this, I think, are these kinds of companies. Now I've talked about this and um, at, for at nauseum, if you've been watching this, we've been talking about shorting this since triple digits. But I just wanna kinda of go through and show you exactly where you're at. You know, you're right down here at the bottom. Okay, so you're at this 2018 today. If you go and take a look here, the low was 1980. So since that you took out that low a month ago, it took a month for it to come back down and here we are again. Uh, I would be looking at shorting these kinds of names still. I, you know, there's there, there's very little people th out there that are going to lend these types of companies money. So I do think, you know, this is 20 bucks still and people are like, well, how low can it go? Well, I'm going to bring up this one. This is Vroom and Vroom is at one, okay? And Vroom went public uh, in 2020 and this was that week, right? So now you can just see it, 97%. CVNA, same thing. Look at this ally. Okay, I may actually do a, a video, more intensive video on this on Saturday. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click all notifications so you're notified of when new videos come out because they come out pretty frequently. So Ally, this as well, I would be watching this like a hawk. Uh, they deal with lenders that have a harder time getting car loans and you can watch that level right there and see how it goes. Um, the one sector that I, I would refer you to that just crushed uh, and we did exceptionally well within the trading room and I'll just, I'll walk you through it so you can see what we did. Um, even if you were on the live call this morning, I was pretty clear that, you know, I do a pre-market live call. Tomorrow's live call is actually going to be post-market. It'll be done Thursday night at five. We're going to just try something a little different and see if that's more helpful. Uh, so try to turn into that, tune into that tomorrow if you can. But all I did was mark off this level. Uh, when you're in a free fall, what you're trying to do is you're trying to quantify your risk as fast as humanly possible, right? So to me, this was a one minute chart. We're grossly oversold. We don't even really need RSI, but if you look at RSI, you know you're gonna be under that 30 line, just like that video that I posted uh, at the end of this. I'll post it again, we'll show you. So you know that you're in that zone where you could bounce. Now, what do we do? We get to a point, we do the overcut, the orb on a one minute opening range breakout, bonk, that was it, this was your stop. You're risking uh, 8.25 to 8.11, 
And essentially what I was looking for on the trade, you know, with slippage, you're losing 20 cents, not 14. I was just looking for it to get back to this level. That was my whole thing. Uh, and what we did, and I think what's very telling, and I, I'm going to just stress this to people. This is extremely telling that what we did today, let me pull this all the way over and let's get rid of all this for now and all these lines. Um, up, 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 yep, get rid of it all. Okay, pull this up. What was extremely telling was people were waiting to buy this. So how do I know that? Because they were waiting for a dip to get involved. The low is the open, and then we made a higher high. So if you go through indexes and sectors today, find the ones that made higher highs today because that's where the volume's going, higher high. See that on the XBI? Also, make sure you subscribe to the newsletter. It comes out three times a week now. There's a link in the description and I'm gonna run through the actual buy list uh, tonight. So see where we're at here. I'm gonna show you this one. Okay, so how'd we do there? We didn't really close at that higher high, did we? That's the socks. So what you're looking for is that particular pattern, okay? This up and over and you just saw buying all day long in this sector. And we've seen that. So those they're the names that you should focus on, okay? I would seriously consider focusing on those names. Now, I do wanna point out a couple other things about, I'll get to Tesla in a moment, but I really want you to focus on names like this when they're rallying up on silly news. So I don't really understand why it's exciting that a company that I'm paying a subscription for is now gonna have ads, or they're gonna have a free service with ads that someone else is gonna watch why I'm paying. Either way, this is a disaster uh, and it's gonna go down. I, people don't remember this, but he actually went through something where he split subscriptions before and it was it was disastrous. Uh, he split DVDs being mailed to your home and he split the online site. site and it was just an absolute disaster. This is gonna be a disaster in my opinion. Um, I think of epic proportion to go out there and, and give people the option because some people are just gonna say, yeah, we'll leave the commercials on and then they're gonna fast forward through the commercials and they're not gonna get the value that they think they're getting for the commercials so people are going to pay less for the commercial. It's going to be a whole, it'll be a whole thing. So this has got disaster written all over it. They should stick with the subscription model and making the best product. Uh, and right now, you know, Disney seems to have cooler stuff. So when these things are rallying up, take a look at them. Uh, I would, I would argue that you want to look at Apple. How did we do? Did we make a higher high today? We didn't, but it looked like we were going to get some momentum and it just, it just never really happened. Um, I would really, you know, I would really watch Apple and how we're doing. And when you see these dojis and undercuts, you just need to be aware. If you look at Tesla, here you are rallying. If you look at Tesla and you look at this uh, open of 710.54, and then you look at this close of 711.12, and you look at the open of 676, you have a bullish engulfing right there. So that is really very interesting, isn't it? So I have a bullish engulfing right on this line. I, I can't rule that out. I can't pretend that it's not there because of the pattern that you're in right now. Now you're in a really wonky pattern and what I would do now that you're, you have this whole thing going on, this is something that I went through um, in the educational class, but I'm gonna walk just through it now. I would watch this level like a hawk. So if I pop out of this box and I pop out of that wick after everything that's going on in here, you can just see how this is just trading, right? The person that sold on May 24th is upset. They never were able to sell cheaper, never were able to buy cheaper buy it back cheaper. So you have this kind of box that's going on right there and I would pay attention to that. That's what I would be focused on. I'd be focused on those kinds of names. I'd be focused on buying biotech. I'm giving you more of a, a, a broad spectrum of what's going on because tomorrow there's some news that's gonna come out on the PPI and you need to be aware of that as well. I'll go through that at the end here just so you can see it. But QQQs, you went right to the trend line and you held. I hope it holds, but that's not a higher high, all right? What did the VIX do? Okay, the VIX, you know, we've been talking about this. You guys are probably sick of me talking about it, but you see this line right here? Okay, I said when we broke it, that's it. We, we, could, we could rally. What happened the next day, right? Trends always have two to three days where they can reverse and go back up. That's exactly what happened here. And this rallied, which means equity should sell off. So I've got bonds rallying. I've got the VIX going up and I have... The, the market trying to stabilize. I'm going into PPI tomorrow, core PPI and P PPI are tomorrow. Okay, people are gonna watch the month over month more than they're gonna watch anything else tomorrow. Even more than jobless claims, they're gonna look at this month over month. This shows what people that produce goods are paying for those goods, if that makes sense. So keep that in mind, that's gonna be a big deal tomorrow. Also, I'm gonna leave on a high note here. This is JNK, okay, this is high yield corporate bonds. They rallied today. So the fact that people are buying, whether they're buying this ETF or the bond prices underneath are moving, I don't really care. The bottom line is 
that bond prices are rallying. So if high yield corporate bond prices are rallying and the 10 year is rallying, that means people are buying high yield corporate bonds, which are more risky instead of buying treasuries, right? They're not just buying treasuries. Remember how we have that divergence chart. So keep that in mind. It's definitely something to keep on your agenda tomorrow. That's it, everybody. Trade to win tomorrow. And remember, 5 p.m. tomorrow night instead of tomorrow morning.